Hey everybody, welcome back to another whiteboard chat. And today we are going to talk about the liver detox process. So this was a request from someone after the last whiteboard chat. They, they wanted me to go over the basic steps of the detoxification process and kind of what that process entails. So that's what we're gonna do. A lot of you are probably familiar with the terms phase one detox, phase two detox, methylation, things like that. So what I wanna do is essentially explain the difference between the two steps and kind of what occurs during that process, all the way down to um, the excretion or phase three. First off, we have phase one, and in this phase, we have essentially fat-soluble toxins. Now we use toxins as a word to describe all of the kind of the waste products that are coming in to be sorted out through this phase. Now during phase one, there are several reactions that are occurring. So these reactions include oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis for those protein consumers, hydration and dehalogenation, okay? So during this process, we are trying to essentially break down these toxins or these, um, these waste products or molecules into water soluble metabolites that can be sorted. So think of phase one as a breakdown phase. Things come in, we're breaking it down, we're breaking them out down into more manageable compounds, smaller compounds where they can move into phase two. There are some, some steps that definitely occur here. Oxidation and hydrolysis, especially in reduction, being a big part of this phase one we're trying to get these free radicals to be taken care of. So for those of you that aren't familiar with what oxidative damage is, essentially it's kind of an imbalance between free radicals and, and uh, antioxidants. So we want to have, you know, we want to have a balance between these two so we don't have an abundance of oxidative species or oxidative damage uh, going on from free radicals. When we get down to phase two, we've turned these, these metabolites or these uh, these toxins into more water soluble compounds okay during these phases we do have a number of nutrients and cofactors and enzymes that are needed so in phase one we have you'll see here b2 b3 b6 folic acid b12 so a lot of b vitamins glutathione for antioxidant and we also have amino acids and flavonoids and things that are involved when we get down to phase two, we have some other vitamins in this phase, A, C, and E, selenium, copper, zinc, manganese, CoQ10, uh, and some others. So we require these cofactors in order for these phases to occur, because if we do not have these cofactors, these phases will occur slowly or sluggishly. Now, when we get down to phase two, we're going through a few different processes this time, glucuronidation, sulfation, glutathione conjugation, acetylation, methylation's in this phase as well. So the methylation is being a, a really big one in this phase. And we require those, those nutrients for methylation to occur. So a lot of you have heard me talk about that and have probably heard that term thrown around a lot. <laughs> so in phase two, once we have all of these nutrients that we need, we're trying to basically take these, take these toxins or take these molecules and figure out what we want to do with them. Do we want to get rid of them? Do we want to push them somewhere else in the body, where do they go, what's the use for them, so on and so forth. Now, really important to note here is that if we don't have the enzymes, cofactors, vitamins, minerals, and things for phase one, and phase one is slow, then we are going to have a kind of a discrepancy between the two phases, where phase one is slow, but phase two is moving normally. If we have a slowdown in phase two, for example, which is gonna be probably even worse, now we have phase one pushing things in at a normal rate, and we have phase two not able to kind of delegate those, uh, those toxins or those, those products, waste products. That's a problem, right? Because now we're gonna have this kind of spillover where we're gonna have a lot more oxidative damage going on potentially. Let's assume that we get through phase one, we get through phase two, we have the right nutrients. We've kind of taken the compounds in phase two and we've added other compounds or carriers to them to move them around wherever we want them to go. Now we can get to the excretory phase or excretory derivatives. We can push them down a few pathways. We can go through the kidneys to the urine or we can go through the intestines, using bile, using enzymes, and we can get to feces or stool. 
So the two main places that we are ridding ourselves of these end products are going to be through urine and through stool. So as you can imagine, if your liver is not functioning well, then your gut is going to be burdened. If your gut is not functioning well, then your liver is going to be burdened. And that's why you hear us talk about supporting the liver so much, especially during these, these times of gut sluggishness or slow motility or SIBO or, or whatever it might be. That's why the liver detox and liver support is going to be so important and vice versa. That's why the gut is so important when we need to support the liver. These two processes are, or these two kind of pathways are our main sources of getting rid of things. We do a lot within our programs and within our supplementation to, um, to kind of kill things off in the gut or break down or get rid of free radicals or whatever it might be. But if the bottom line is if we can't get rid of stuff ultimately at the end, that's not good, it's gonna be circulating, it's gonna be floating around, so we have to be able to actually excrete it. But again, that's phase one, phase two, and elimination, and essentially everything that is involved. So hopefully you guys are able to see the kind of different nutrients and stuff that's involved on here, and hopefully this video was helpful.